right, guys, got a video coming at you today breaking down how to use this extension bench. Uh, I used to call it a low back extension bench, uh, but you can use it to train hip extension as well, too. And so some people called them a 45 degree bench or something, but some of them you can adjust the angle of it, too. So I think an extension bench is probably the most accurate name, although call it whatever the hell that you want. Um, and so, again, the reality of the two different types of extension that I'm talking about that you can train here is you can train spinal extension, in which case you're working basically your low back muscles, or you can train hip extension, in which case you're using glutes, hams, even adductors to a certain degree. Um, being that obviously you're looking at multiple different joints you're trying to train and multiple different muscles, you need to have some sort of different setup going on here to make sure that you can accomplish that goal. Uh, so first I'm going to go over what do you want to do if you're trying to train low back extension, back extension, and particularly your low back muscles. Um, and the reality is you want to block the other joint from moving. So again, if I'm not trying to train my hips and my hip musculature, I want to block that joint so it can't move. And so the easy thing to do with this, if your bench adjusts, is to basically put the pad almost as high as possible. So again, where is that joint? This is your hip crease. If I was literally going to fold up the hips, you can find the crease where that would be. And basically all you want to make sure that is happening is the pad is above that crease. So once I get that set up nice and high, I'm up in here, you can see that again, if this is my hip crease, the pad is well above it. If I'm going to fold over at this point in time, the only thing that can really fold is going to be my vertebra. And so I'm going into basically spinal rounding, spinal flexion, and then coming up into spinal extension. Um, and so again, it's a very, very nice one because it's almost, I can do it, so it's idiot proof. Um, again, putting that high enough, I couldn't really hip flex and hip extend if I wanted to. So if I want to train the other muscles, though, if I want to train my hip extension muscles, I want to make sure that I'm in a position where that joint, again, that hip crease, where it's the femur sitting in the pelvis, can actually move. I can actually rotate my pelvis over the pad. So the simple thing is put the pad lower. There's a whole lot of other nuance involved in far as how do I make my hamstrings work more? How do I make my glutes work more? Maybe that's a different video. But for this one, we're just talking about setup. So you want the pad where, again, you can see the crease right here from my hip is right around here. So the pad is well below that. So now if I want to, I can move just at my hips and I can use hip muscles to do that. So again, easily to the point where that joint is above the pad. I can easily isolate hip flexion and extension and then in turn train those muscles. So that's the simple thing, pad high, pad low, you know, make sure the joint um, is either blocked or not blocked depending on which you're moving it. And let's look at my sweet ass board and kind of draw what's going on from some bones and some joints. And again, if this is your first video, I say that I hired Lucasfilm and Pixar to help with these graphics. This is why they're so amazing. Um, but the reality is instead of messing around, I've messed around with graphics and image generators and stuff. And the reality is it tends to take me 10 times more time to do. And it's always less accurate than what I'm trying to convey. So you guys can deal with my sweet little drawings here. Um, but again, I can generally get the point across a little bit better. So again, this is what I'm going to show basically if the goal is to train low back extension, this is kind of what's occurring in your body. So hopefully you can basically see this is the equivalent of the pad up higher. Obviously you've got the pad behind your ankle here and we can see the joints we're trying to influence. So again, we've got the knee joint. And again, this right here, so just imagine this is the rotation point of your hip. So this is basically where your femur sits in your pelvis. And so you can see, you really can't tip. You've got your pelvis actually sitting up against the pad. The pad is actually over top of that joint. So again, if my pelvis is pressing the pad, I really can't move my pelvis and I can't get any range of motion there. So again, if this is my vertebra, these are all little vertebra, basically every one of those is a joint, an articulation. If I'm going to bring my body down at this point, it's gonna come from, so this would be neutral, it's gonna come from spinal rounding. So again, we're going from neutral up into a spinal flexion, and this would be all the vertebra bending over top of the pad. And then to come back to the top, we could come to neutral or even come slightly past, you know, and go into extension. So hopefully that makes sense from a bone standpoint as far as what is occurring when we block that pad, block that joint. Now in this case, this is the pad lower. This is if we're trying to isolate hip flexion, hip extension. And so what you're gonna see happen here is, so again, if this is my vertebra here, I'm not gonna draw out all those joints this time. Now I actually have that my hip joint past that pad. So now I could have the option, yes, I could still move spinal flexion extension, but at least I have the option to move my pelvis. So what will happen, and this will be easy if I erase it. So this would be the neutral starting position here. And then I tip my pelvis to the point where here's the top of the pelvis going this way. 
This is now the bottom ish of the pelvis up here. The joint is still there. This is the axis of rotation. And again, I can keep that spine completely neutral. So there's the spine again. So basically this would be somewhere around the end position. And again, if we imagine this is the start just to draw it over top, this would be the start position. So here you can see you at least have the option for none of these joints to move. Your vertebra doesn't move. And the only thing creating motion is right here at this axis, the femur sitting in that pelvis. And then again, from even from a muscle standpoint, hopefully if that doesn't make any sense too, is realize that Basically, if we're looking at hamstrings and glutes, hamstrings kind of attach a little bit to the bottom of the pelvis there. Glutes attach to some other stuff, but basically up more towards the top of the pelvis. You can obviously glutes don't cross over the knee joint. My mistake. Here's the glutes attaching here. So basically, if you look at it, what's actually moving here from a muscle standpoint? Nothing as far as basically the glutes and hams are concerned. Basically, your erectors just run all along your vertebra. And so you can see that obviously that would be the length change occurring within the erectors. Whereas here, going from one position, so the start position, again, your hamstrings would go from somewhere around here, glutes go somewhere around here. And then when we move into the end position, and without doing too many colors and making this too complicated, you can see how these would lengthen. So the hamstring now, as your pelvis rotates, will be somewhere over here, and you'll see that the glutes would be somewhere attached up here. So hopefully, even though that's a bunch of stuff drawn over top of each other, that's the big difference is basically, obviously, if this joint isn't moving, your lower back muscles don't cross over your hip joint in any capacity. They only cross up over here in the vertebra. And same thing up here is now that you can see that your hamstrings and your glutes cross over your hip joint. So when that entire pelvis rotates, um, again, over top of that pad and that uh, axis of that hip joint actually moves, those muscles change in length. So when they go this way, obviously you go down, they're all gonna lengthen. And when you come to the top, they're basically gonna shorten. And as you don't move your spine, because again, the lower back muscles don't cross over, that hip joint there basically just gonna stay the same length the whole time. Of course, especially depending on if you're holding weight, even holding your body weight, these, these muscles are still performing an isometric, again, against body weight or whatever you're holding, but they're not going through active flexion, extension, you know, concentric, eccentric style training. So one, hopefully some easy stuff as far as setup is concerned. What can you actually do in your gym? What can you actually adjust on your little extension bench there? And then what's actually occurring within the body? Per the usual, if you find this stuff helpful or useful or have any feedback whatsoever, leave it below in the comments. If you enjoyed it, give me the little thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Um, and if you want some more of this stuff, again, give me your feedback below as well too. Like I said before, if you guys like it, I'll do some more. If you don't like it, I'll go back to talking about muscles and lifting up heavy things and all that good stuff. All right, guys, till next one.